Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm Jessica Fisher, the Furry Family Coach, and in this video, we're talking about fireworks. social media for probably the past week or so it's gotten really heavy about dogs and fireworks and I totally get it so I wanted to just kind of um, give you guys my two cents about it um, as a positive reinforcement force free dog trainer and someone who is very passionate about canine nutrition um, so there are posts everywhere and there are kind of conflicting posts depending on what circles you're in um, on social media but basically there are a lot of dogs out there who are very much afraid scared terrified even of the loud noises from fireworks and unfortunately they're here they're around people use them um, the you know cities use them. It's, um, individual cities having their own 4th of July festivities are using them. People down the street from you may be using them. Um, depending on where you live, if they are legal or, or illegal, even if they are illegal, a lot of times people are still acquiring them and using them. Um, so I wanted to discuss a few things about firework safety, or actually not, not necessarily safety, but just keeping your dog um, and even your cat safe when fireworks are going off especially if you are if you have a pet who is terrified of fireworks um lots of talk about this on social media and, and it happens every year all of these things pop up so let's talk about it um first of all why do we even use fireworks so i actually looked this up because i had the wrong information in my head um it, it started in 1777 um, John Adams, actually, one of our founding fathers decided that it was going to be a huge festivity to, um, for the whole country to celebrate our independence, um, which is what July 4th is all about. It's Independence Day. It means it is, you know, very much, fireworks are very much ingrained in American history. Um, we have, we didn't use them in 1776, but we did use them uh, July 4th, 1777, and ever since. We have been using fireworks. Um, they really were initially brought about to have, you know, John Adams wanted these huge festivities, um, and really just to boost morale in the country. And, you know, we can say many years that we need to boost morale in the country, but that's originally why we used them. We wanted, um, they wanted to have a huge party, huge festivities, and fireworks were a big part of that. Um, so I don't see them going away anytime soon. So we want to talk about what we can do with our dogs. Um, before I really get started in what we can do, I want to remind you to grab a copy of my book. I don't actually, I don't think I flipped the screen, so you might not be able to read it properly. Let's see. Seven Miracle Steps to Get Your Dog to Obey Commands Even If They Failed Before. Reminder, 100% positive reinforcement, force-free methods in this book. Please grab yourself a copy. I did put a link in the description above. If you're watching this live, if you're watching the recording, either way, if you wouldn't mind posting, um, just copying and pasting that link in the comments, bit.ly slash canine secrets. All right, so grab your copy. You're gonna love it. You can get a digital copy or you can get a paperback copy, same link. So, um, let's talk about fireworks and your dog or cat, depending. Some cats are very much afraid of fireworks as well. The first thing I want to talk about, and there are many, there are actually a few things we're going to talk about in this video. So, the very first thing I want to talk about is you. And again, I talk about this a lot, not specifically about fireworks, but it is the exact same thing I'm getting ready to tell you. Your 
anxiety, your behavior, how calm or not calm you are transfers to your pet, especially your dog. So number one thing, if you really want to set your dog up for success, you have to set yourself up for success. So if you have a ton of anxiety, if you're already pacing around the house thinking, oh my gosh, fireworks are coming, my dog is gonna go nuts, my dog hates fireworks, we can't do this, how are we gonna get through this this year? Your dog is feeling that. So that is the absolute worst thing you can be doing right now. The best thing you can do is to calm yourself. Understand that, yes, there are gonna be fireworks. Take this opportunity to start training with your dog. Now, ideally we want to train and build up sensitivity to a stimulus, especially one as loud um, as fireworks. So this isn't something that you're going to come around once a year and say, okay, now we, you know, it's July 1st, we need to train for July 4th. This is something you wanna practice all year long. But since we're here, it's July 3rd, we know the fireworks are coming. What can we do? We ideally want to train for an extended period of time and build up your dogs, desensitize them basically, to the loud noise of fireworks. Um, but again, the number one thing you need to do is to calm yourself. The more anxious you are, the more anxious your dog is gonna be. And that's exactly what we don't want. Um, so training is gonna be really important. Desensitization, um, using positive reinforcement is is going to be something that you're going to benefit from all year long so go ahead and start and by next fourth of july you should be rocking and rolling good to go okay but again there are other things that do contribute to your dog's anxiety especially if you have a dog that doesn't normally have anxiety but um really does get anxious around fireworks first of all let's look at you and let's you know go my bad, I got a phone call. Okay, that's what happens on my video, sorry guys. So, um, so look in the mirror, how anxious are you about these fireworks? How, how much anxiety do you really have about um, how you think your dog is going to react to the fireworks? Let's get that in check first, okay? And that can take some practice. I'm not gonna you know, sit here and say, turn it on and off it's not a switch you can turn on and off it's something you're gonna have to work on I get that but let's start working on it okay um, another thing that especially if we do have dogs that we know have anxiety um, outside of looking at ourselves of course we want to look at the nutrition we're providing our dog this is gonna make a huge difference in I, and I have seen it personally in so many dogs and other veterinarians that I have um, come in contact with that I have you know read articles from that I've read books from have seen the exact same thing when we provide an adequate nutrition adequate nutrition to our dogs when we provide them species appropriate biologically appropriate foods we see huge changes in not only the physical appearance of our dogs and the um how we, maybe maybe they're 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 how do i want to say this i'm getting tongue-tied um they're not as sickly right so we have sorry okay we have better health in our dogs but we also see changes in behavior in our dogs especially with dogs that have anxiety we see huge improvements in anxiety in our dogs when we provide them appropriate nutrition and i am one of those people who just absolutely love to talk about what you're feeding your dog i get that not everybody wants to talk about it and that's okay if especially if you're feeding a dry uh, food kibble to your dog. There are so many things we can do to improve the nutrition that you're giving to your dog. Most foods that you buy off of the shelf are nutritionally inadequate. And this is especially true with vitamins and minerals and proteins. So we want to, in, again, this is not just my opinion, but it is my opinion. 
feed our dogs and our cats a biologically appropriate species specific diet. Even when we feed a biologically appropriate diet, for example, I feed my dog Kim Answers Pet Food, which I personally believe is the one of the best, if not the best, commercially available <laughs> dog foods on the market. Sorry, my dog just went barking at something and I'm like, I heard a noise too, what's going on? Kim, you okay? Okay, so I still supplement because I know that there is no dog food available today, even one that you can make if you balance it 80-10-10 or 80-10-5-5, however you're doing it. And if you have questions about that, post below because this, this video isn't specifically about nutrition. So if you have questions about what I'm talking about, post it below. No food is one size fits all. This is true for us, this is true for our dogs, and I think this is also true for our cats. So every one of us is has, has some diversity, whether it's an illness, whether it's um, some genetic difference, whether it is um, just the medications that we've taken in the past that have altered our body, uh, whatever might be going on in your, your dog's microbiome in your gut, we are all just a little bit different. So I don't believe there is ever a one size fits all diet. Now, with that being said, you can start with an amazing base and supplement from there. You'll have to, I believe, supplement less, which is what I'm doing with Kim. I'm starting with what I believe is the best dog food available commercially, which is Answers Pet Food. It is a raw fermented, um, dog food. They also make cat food. Um, check it out, answerspetfood.com, I believe it is, but if you Google Answers Pet Food, you'll see it. Um, I believe it is the best food commercially available for my pets. So I start with that base, and then I supplement from there. For example, with my dog Kim, she needs uh, more biotin and omegas, omega-3s, omega-6s. I know that because her paws get really uh, rough. Her paw pads get really rough. When I supplement her with biotin, with um, for example, I'll use a hemp oil, um, I'll rotate sardines, um, different things that I can provide to her to supplement her with these different um, vitamins and minerals that she needs, I see a huge improvement in her paw pads. That's just one way I know that she needs supplementation. The other way we know what your dog, maybe sometimes your dog has excesses, sometimes your dog is deficient in something. You can get blood tests. You have to specifically request them through your veterinarian nutritional blood panels. So we can see where our dog is, what they may need less of, what they may need more of. We can go from there. But if you are feeding um, just a kibble off of the shelf of a grocery store or a pet food store, I highly recommend switching to a biologically appropriate species specific diet, which is going to be um, a raw food diet. Um, if you are super, super, I cannot, I, you just can't get your head in, in the mindset of feeding a raw diet, or if you have an immunocompromised pet, then you can feed a lightly cooked homemade diet. That's also going to be so much better for them. So when we balance out any deficiencies or excesses that your pet may have in vitamins and minerals, we're gonna see huge changes in their behavior, specifically if they are, um, if they have anxiety, if they're hyperactive, uh, maybe if they're sluggish. So we're gonna see huge changes when we provide them appropriate nutrition. The other thing, if you are feeding kibble, you cannot make kibble without carbohydrates, period end of story. What happens is we see sometimes up to and sometimes even exceeding 50% of what's in that kibble uh, being carbohydrates. What happens to carbohydrates in the body, our body, your dog's body, breaks those carbohydrates down into sugar. So if you, if you look at you're potentially feeding up to 50%, sometimes more, sugar 
to your dog, how do you think that's affecting their anxiety? Not good, right? You're going to have huge highs and you're going to have huge lows. You know it from you eating sugar, right? You have huge highs when you get that sugar into your body and then you really drop down low. So we're going to see these huge highs and these huge lows when we feed our dogs a kibble diet because there is so much sugar in it. That is not good for dogs with anxiety. So um, that is going to wrap up. I'm going to get off of my soapbox for the nutritional portion of this particular video. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about what we can do with our dogs um, to help alleviate the anxiety they have, specifically in this video, because July 4th is tomorrow, we're talking about fireworks. But really, this is going to apply with a lot of different anxieties. Um, again, getting your anxiety in check is one of the most important things you can do, and then addressing their your pet's nutritional needs. So, so important, especially when you have a dog with anxiety. Um, I, I mean, I say especially, but really, I think 100% of our pets, 100% of our animals should be on species-specific, um, biologically appropriate foods. I think that's also true with us, but that's a whole other, like, I don't, I don't deal in human nutrition. So, <laughs> anyway, so we're talking about getting your anxiety in check, correcting the nutritional imbalances that your pet may have. And then um, we also touched on training because we do want to work on training and desensitizing your pet to the loud noises, which isn't going to happen overnight. So we, we can start now and we can work. And um, as long as you are positive, you're consistent, you are going to, by next July 4th, you should see huge improvements in your dog. Um, just by using positive reinforcement and desensitizing to the loud noises. So those are really huge. Now, it's July 3rd. Tomorrow is July 4th, and fireworks are coming. So what can you do immediately right now? If you know that your dog has serious issues, if, if they have run away before, if you know they freak out in the house, if you know that they have maybe injured themselves in the past, that's not good, right? We want to avoid that. So what can you do? First of all, never leave your pets outside, especially during uh, when fireworks are going off. They will bolt. They will try to find a way out, a way away from that noise because they have no idea what it is. It sounds insanely dangerous to them. They're going to try to get away from it. Don't leave them outside. If you have your dog with you and you're outside somewhere, don't tie them up that they can really cause serious uh, harm to themselves if you do this. The absolute best thing you can do is to stay home with your dog or your cat, whatever pet you're dealing with. Um, we're specifically talking about dogs in this video, but stay home with your pet, okay? Um, don't have a ton of people over if you can avoid it. If you do have a ton of people over, then find a quiet, safe space in your home where you and your dog can set up and turn the TV on, um, find distractions. Again, before any of these festivities take place, take your dog for a nice long walk, maybe a hike, something to, to really exercise them, get a bunch of energy out of them so that they can be calmer. Um, when you're laying down, turn the, again, turn the TV on, turn the radio on, have some distractions in the room, really make a calm den for your pet to be in. Um, if your pet, d try to avoid giving your pet access to any entryways or exitways. Um, if you can, you know, block windows or doors, do so. We don't want your pet harming themselves trying to escape and getting away. Um, but really, the best thing you can do is stay home with your pet, be as calm as possible, set up a calm area for them, provide distractions, put on the TV, put on the radio, um, a couple of other things, and I put links up, uh, in the description of the video. I've had really great um, successes using thunder shirts with dogs. Um, I haven't tried them on cats, but I have seen people use them on cats, and they, I've heard of great successes, so I put a link to thunder shirts. Um, you can give those a try. Basically what they do is like, it's like a hug. 
for your dog, right? So you, they, they kind of feel like they're being hugged, which is a, a very calming thing. Um, the, the, the feeling that the Thunder Shirt provides is very calming. You can also um, order, and you may not get these in time for tomorrow, but so you know they're available and you can have them on hand, um, yogurts, calming dog treats. They're made from sheep's milk, so um, they are naturally calming. Give those a try. I have seen people have really great successes with those. Um, I put a link for those above. I also really like um, Animalio essential oils. Um, uh, specifically in this instance, they are uh, Animalio is veterinary grade essential oils developed and tested by um, a holistic veterinarian, or integrative veterinarian, uh, Dr. Melissa Shelton. They are veterinary grade, meaning they are designed specifically for use. Uh, on animals. So chamomile is the blend uh, I would recommend in this particular instance. Um, I put a link to Animalio above as well. And then some people have had a lot of success with CBD oil, but I will say there's a lot of CBD oil on the market. It's like the new trendy thing. And anytime you're using anything on your pet, you really want to do your research and make sure that um, all of the proper testing is in place. Um, you have a full spectrum CBD oil that uh, they are testing for, you know, chemicals and things like that because there are chemicals in the soil and you want to make sure that when the plants are being raised that chemicals are being transferred into um, uh, the oil extraction. So if they're posting their third party testing, that's amazing. You definitely want to see their third party testing results. And you want to know that it is specifically designed for pets and tested um, uh, on pets because our, our dog's metabolism is more similar to ours, but our cat's metabolism is, is the metabolic pathway that our cats use is completely different from the metabolic pathway that we and our dogs use. So we want to know that these uh, products are safe for our pets. And one that I know of that has that checks all of these boxes is CBD Dog Health. So I put a link above for that as well in the description. Um, they have CBD oils, tinctures, and treats for both dogs and cats. So you can give those a try as well. Um, but again, none of you know none of that matters without putting the training in place, without you getting your anxiety in check, without uh, making sure your pet has the proper nutrition that they need, that they aren't in in excess of anything that's detrimental, they aren't in deficit of anything that is potentially causing uh, behavioral modification. And in so many dogs, as a dog trainer, I can tell you, in so many dogs, providing them appropriate nutrition makes a world of difference in their behavior. Um, so I gave you a lot in this video. I know I gave you a lot. It is all worthwhile, I promise. Um, Thank you so much, by the way, for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, post a comment below so I know you're here, so I know you saw it. Um, I'll see your name, of course. Let me know if you liked this video, if you got anything useful out of it. Share this video with anyone that you think could find um, some really useful information in it because I know that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to help dogs. Bottom line, I want to help dogs. So the more you share this video, the more dogs can be helped. Um, and if you didn't like the video, let me know that too, because if you don't like it, let me know what you don't like about it. Um, and we'll go from there, see what we can, what changes we can make. If you um, have any questions about this video or about other topics, put them below. You never know, I might make a video to answer your question. Um, and before I go, I'm just going to remind you about the book seven miracle steps grab your copy i put a link above bit.ly slash canine secrets um you can get a digital copy you can get a paperback copy i highly recommend anyone with a pet reading this book and with that guys i'm going to go ahead and end this video i really appreciate you being here and watching with me today um yeah, go ahead and leave your comments, questions below. I love to hear them. Even if it's after the fact, if it's not live, if it's um, recording, I'll still get a notification that you commented. So I will see you in the next video. 
Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.